This is the Sony ZV-10, a camera designed to be the go-to for vloggers and beginner content creators. For me, this is my everything camera. I film, I take photos, and everything to do with this channel all on this camera. But what if I want to see if I can turn this camera into a professional light camera with accessories, all within the price that it costs to buy one ZV-10 with the kit lens brand new? Let's find out if I can stay in budget and complete this challenge. First of all, we need to say how much the Sony ZV-10 costs right now on Amazon. So if I look at it on Amazon here, I can currently get it for £689.89. So for this challenge, that is my budget for the accessories. So a few rules to this challenge. They can only be accessories that are compatible with the Sony ZV-10 and they can only be bought on Amazon. I'll leave links to everything that I get in the description below. So whatever the price is right now is the price that I can work with even if it's on sale. And it has to be an accessory that's gonna benefit my own use of the Sony ZV-10 and I can use accessories that I've already purchased only if they're from Amazon. I'm giving myself the standard most essential accessory which you should have anyway, the memory card. The one I have in the ZV-10 is the SanDisk Extreme 128 gigabyte mini SD card which goes into an SD adapter into the camera. So I've made my six purchases of accessories that I think will complement and upgrade the Sony ZV-10 perfectly and make it into more of a pro machine for my usage. And I've categorized these accessories into four subcategories, the lens, handling, audio, and visual. Now let's start with the lens. As much as I like the kit lens and I have been using it for a long time, for me, it can be a little bit limiting and in low light conditionings, using it can be a bit tricky, but that doesn't stop people, including myself, from getting amazing photos and videos out of this lens. I bought the Sigma 16 F 1.4 lens, which on Amazon you can get for 385 pounds and 99 pence. So if we deduct that from the budget, it leaves us with 312 pounds and 99 pence left to spend, which is a considerable chunk out of our budget, but I think it's well worth it. This is a wide angle prime lens. It has a fast aperture of f1.4 compared to the 3.5 on the kit lens, which allows you to capture more light and create that shallow depth of field. This lens is ideal for vlogging as it's gonna give you a wider field of view, a brighter image and creates that desirable background blur effect. But if you are using it for vlogging, then just remember that compared to the kit lens, the weight of the camera and the lens is gonna be considerably a lot more than the weight of the camera and the kit lens. If you value speed, sharpness, and low light performance, then getting a lens like the Sigma 16 mm f1.4 might be a good choice for you. If you value versatility, convenience, and portability, then staying with the Sony 16 to 50 mm kit lens might be better for you. But getting the Sigma 16 shouldn't be the end of you using the kit lens because you can still use both lenses in different situations and purposes as they really complement each other really well. Next is handling. One of my bugbears around cameras is that there are no additional mounting points if I want to add additional accessories and the camera on its own is potentially fragile from falls. So I got this, the small rig camera cage. Having this solves two of my main issues of providing mounting points and giving the camera body that protection with its metal frame which attaches to the camera. At £55.90, it takes my budget down to £257.09. It has multiple one quarter and three eight threaded holes, a cold shoe and a built-in quick release plate that is Arca Swiss compatible for the quick tripod attachments and a handy screwdriver at the bottom for easy installation into the camera. When I'm filming something freehand, I prefer to have a variety of different positions that I can hold the camera in other than those traditional positions. So in addition to the cage for handling, I'm also using, which I bundled these into one accessory, two handles, both from small rig, a top handle and a side handle, each costing £29.90, leaving me with £197.29. These handles attached to the top and side of the cage both have comfortable rubber grips and additional mounting points. The handles are really useful for carrying the camera, stabilizing shots, as well as providing those additional mounting points for even more accessories. Next, audio. The native microphone on the Sony ZV-10 is okay. This is what the native microphone sounds like on the Sony ZV-10 at vlogging arm's length. There's certainly room for improvement. So that's why I'm using the Hollyland Lark M1 wireless microphone. And this is what the Hollyland Lark M1 sounds like attached to the Sony ZV-10 with me speaking into the transmitter and the receiver on the Sony ZV-10. You can get this for £56, leaving me with £141.29 remaining. 
This microphone delivers long range, crystal clear audio for your videos. The version I have comes with just the transmitter and receiver, but you can get one that comes with two transmitters, a receiver and a charging case. The microphone transmitter, which I'm currently wearing now, is small and lightweight. It has a one click noise cancellation feature that filters out ambient noise and it has a clip which fits nicely onto clothing, as you can see here. The receiver, which is currently attached to the ZV-10, is also very compact and has a clip, which goes perfectly on the cage. And it connects to the ZV-10 via 3.5 millimeter cable. Both the transmitter and the receiver have USB-C ports for charging. They automatically pair together when turned on and can provide up to eight hours of operation time. I mentioned before it's long wireless range. If you haven't seen my review video on these, go check that out after this as I put that 650 feet range claim to the test. Anyone who is vlogging or doing any front of camera shots like this indoors or outdoors, it's gonna benefit from having a wireless microphone system like this as it's gonna allow you to record high quality audio without wires or hassle. Finally, visual. I don't mind the screen on the Sony ZV-10, particularly as you can twist it and turn it so it's facing if you're recording something like this. But there are gonna be certain situations where it just needs to be a bit brighter, a bit bigger and a lot clearer. So I've got the Portkeys PT-5 II camera monitor for £123, leaving me with £18.29. This is a five inch touchscreen monitor that connects to the camera via HDMI cable. It has full HD resolution, a wide color gamut and a 500 nit brightness. It also has a dual battery plate that can accept various different battery types. This monitor has many professional features such as the ability to see live waveforms, histograms, vectorscopes, peaking, false color, the ability to add your own LUTs to the monitor itself so you can see what your post edited content will look like with your LUTs applied. For me in here doing the sort of shots, the PT-5 II is a great monitor for shots like this, as it's gonna let you see your image clearly and accurately and visually see those minor settings changes with ease without having to struggle looking at the LCD screen of the ZV-10. And because this monitor doesn't come with batteries in the box, my final purchase is this double pack of MPF 550 batteries at $15.99, which are compatible with this monitor as well as other accessories like lights that you may already have. So with these accessories, I've turned my Sony ZV-10 from this into this. For me, they're gonna enhance the ZV-10's performance, functionality, and versatility in those different shooting scenarios and for many different purposes. And thankfully, I've got £2.30 spare change left from my original budget. While this setup is perfect for me, there are gonna be various modifications and substitutions that I'm sure you would make. Like you might wanna add a mini tripod or a gimbal instead of those handles for increased stability. If your primary function of the ZV-10 is for vlogging maybe, or you might want to add an external flash module if you're more photography focused, or you might wanna even add various filters or a different lens to the camera. The good thing about camera setups is that there is no correct or one size fits all answer. You will find the accessories that meet your criteria that will enhance the way you work and create with your camera, whether that's with the ZV-10 or another camera. Let me know in the comments below what accessories you have in your setup. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this and check out this video to see why I think the Sony ZV-10 is still the camera of choice for beginners. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.